Hello fellow survivors and welcome to another campfire chat with me, Zach, here to bring you some long dark news. And in this campfire chat is a little bit different, we're going to talk more generally about the future of the DLC and the long dark content in general. So this campfire will be a bit light, it will be more like a podcast and in fact I considered making this the first podcast actually of a new series. But I'm going to show you a few things nevertheless so it will be a campfire chat. But well, it's going to be fairly laid back and this is a typical thing you might want to listen to in the background because we're going to talk more generally about the long dark and how it's going in the future with the dlc in particular with relation to the dev diary that was released in may 2023 18th of may so what's that about so let's talk about the dlc so far so when I say DLC in the long dark, I really mean general updates to the game and not just the paid content. If you're not familiar with it already, the DLC called Tales from the Far Territory was announced in 2022 and released in December of 2022 for PC and March in 2023 for consoles. It still hasn't been patched to Switch as of now because there's some difficulty with programming that. And the DLC opened up a whole new range of content. So much stuff was added. Uh, new regions, new items, new mechanics, and all sorts of stuff. Including a whole roadmap of things that uh, is of stuff that's going to come. Like the sled, the cougar, the trader, uh, base customization. All sorts of things that people really want. Now all of those things as of this video have not been released. And the reason we have a little talk now is because of the dev diary that came out in May 2023. Now usually when dev diaries come out, they talk about things like what they're going to add to the game, uh, what's in the next patch and so on. But this dev diary is a bit different. This dev diary is basically an apology from Hinterland, in particular uh, Raf, uh, who is the director of Hinterland and who not that long ago actually resigned as the game director of The Long Dark to work on other projects. But he's in this dev diary saying that he's coming back as game director, uh, presumably taking over from Katie Sorrell. Katie Sorrell took over as game director in 2022, and she's the voice you can hear in some of the videos that have showcased the content so far. Hello survivors, Katie here, project lead on The Long Dark. Today I am really excited to share with you what the Long Dark team has added into Part 2 of Tales from the Far Territory, the paid expansion pass for the Long Dark. Part 2 is called Signal Void, and here is what you can expect to find added to the paid stream of Part 2, and for free in the base game in the March update to Survival Mode. Now I don't know what's going on there, if he just needs to be more hands-on or what, but that's nobody's business. But the point of this dev diary is that it's basically an apology uh, for why they haven't released enough stuff. So let me explain what that means. When they announced the Tales from the Far Territory, they also made a roadmap of everything they were going to add to the game. Some of them were paid, some were free. And they have this roadmap of all sorts of things. So obviously there's new regions and tales and stuff like that. There's also stuff like um, things like uh, clothing variants, uh, and then you can actually see on the page here what they have released so far. Glimmer Fog, Insomnia. This is actually great. I haven't actually seen this until now. They actually said what they released, like Glimmer Fog, Tool Variants, Clothing Variants, and so on. Uh, and But they haven't done things like Enhanced Cooking, The Trader, Ptarmigan, and so on. Uh, the Travoy, which, uh, Trava, which is the sled, and of course the Cougar. So the stuff that they haven't released. So they made this roadmap of things they're going to do and also the free updates, which they've done a lot of. Uh, and this is really the major one that's really missing. Uh, probably that's going to come with the Cougars, the Global Wildlife Refresh. But in any case, what the point of this is that there's all these things that they're going to add to the game, right? All sorts of things. And they released a lot of it. But what they said initially was that they were going to release things uh, every 8 to 10 weeks. Uh, this is what it says here actually still. <laughs> that they're going to release with 8 to 10 weeks. So roughly every 2 months they're going to add stuff. Over the course of 2023 they're going to add stuff to the Long Dark. Some of it's going to be free. Some of it's going to be paid part of the DLC. Uh, by the way the DLC is a one time purchase. If you buy it it covers everything including what's been released and it's going to be released. You don't have to pay 
for extra stuff. It's a one-time thing. But anyway, in the developer diary, it's basically an apology from RAF that they haven't been able to meet this criteria. They, the 8 to 10 weeks is too difficult, particularly because this is a company that, that doesn't do crunch, which means that they don't try and push for deadlines to get things out for the sake of it. They prefer having things uh, quality over quantity. And because of that, they haven't been able to actually produce all the content that they wanted to uh, at this rate that they would like to. And therefore, they are a bit apologetic for that. Uh, and so basically, they're saying now that um, they are not going to stick to that. They are not going to promise that they're going to release things every eight to ten weeks because they haven't been able to do it so far. Uh, the first part of the DLC was released in December. If I remember correctly, I think it was December 5th of 2022. And then part two was released on March 30th, 2023. So that's, that's like three and a half, almost four months apart. So obviously not within the time frame they wanted. Now, uh, it's, it's basically saying that the, they're sorry that this is happening and that, uh, you know, I'm sorry I've let you down, as he says. Uh, but it's just how it is because things take a while to make. And there also sorts of fixes. There's all sorts of issues as well. You know, when you when you have uh, content being released, new content, there's always going to be issues. There's going to be bugs. There's going to be glitches and things to polish. And the long dark is no exception. And then you need to dedicate time to fix those things before you release anything else. So the thing that's happening now with the future of the DLC is that we have to expect the release to be slower than before uh, or slower than what initially was announced rather. So. The plan is basically to release uh, six parts over the year, I think is what they said. But um, that most likely is not going to happen now. It's going to be instead that it's going to be released whenever they can instead, uh, whenever they are able to. So hopefully it will take a year, but probably take longer than a year. This also means that episode five is delayed. Uh, they said earlier the episode 5 at the earliest will be late 2023. That's not going to happen. It's going to be late, uh, sorry, 2024 most likely. Now, a lot of people, of course, were disappointed that the release is going slower than usual. But my impression from most comments on my channel and everywhere else is pretty positive. Like, people aren't in a rush to get the content. As I said before, I felt that the game is pretty much perfect pre-DLC. Even if no more content was added, it would still be a great game. So any additional content is like a bonus. You don't really need it in the game. So therefore, it's uh, fine if it takes longer. If the DLC takes two years to release, in my opinion, that's fine. It doesn't matter. And if you don't buy the DLC, you still get all this free stuff. You get um, you get all this stuff, you know, spawn point refresh, loot, fire and arrows, vice and notes and mentos, beach combing, acorns and so on and all this other stuff. So all this other stuff being added for free anyway. And, you know, it's amazing that they add all this stuff to begin with. And I think that Hintlin and, and Raf and everyone, Katie, everyone at Hintlin are doing an amazing job creating this game. The game is fantastic the way it looks now. And I don't really have any complaints about it. Now, there's always going to be people who are upset. At the moment, I of course understand that the people playing Switch are a bit upset because they still haven't gotten the updates because there's some issues there, but everyone else has it. But I wanted to tell you a little bit about what happened when this DLC was released. So when the DLC was released, there was a huge burst of viewers on Twitch. On Twitch, if you go on the long dark on Twitch, which, by the way, you should check out Twitch, regardless of what you think of Twitch. Uh, Twitch can be very toxic, can be really fun. But if you go on Twitch on the long dark, you can find loads of really good streamers who are very fun, friendly and inclusive. You absolutely should check it out. And normally on, an, on there's maybe two to three hundred viewers on the long dark. But on the release of the DLC, it was closer to 10,000. In particular, um, Thomasina, Kimiota, and Rand Alpha, 1966, had a lot of viewers because they had giveaways for codes as well. Uh, I also had a giveaway, but I did it a different day because I didn't want to stream the other day of release. But what was interesting, there was something that happened. When the, 
DLC was released in December. It happened, I think it's 7 o'clock in the evening for uh, European time, CET. Everyone was hyped. The trailer came out. Katie and Raph was narrating saying what was going to be released. And then everyone was excited. And then you went to play the game and this happened. So there was a bug, you couldn't actually play the game and we couldn't figure out what was happening and it quickly became apparent that everyone was having this issue, no one was playing it. And people of course were getting impatient and so on. And eventually someone discovered that it had to do with a file to do with Wintermute that corrupted the launch and so on. And there was a fix that was uh, posted on a forum and you could just do it manually. But within about an hour and a half, Hintlin had already figured it out and patched it. Now, what's interesting about this is two things. First is that, well, a lot of people got upset by this. It's like, wow, it doesn't work upon release and that sort of thing. But I mean, they fixed it within an hour and a half. That's really fast. People who started playing the DLC like two hours after release or later probably had no idea this even happened because that's how quickly it was fixed. But people who were sitting there ready and had dedicated time to it were a bit upset. But these things happen, you know, and I don't think it's right to be upset with people for having issues with launch, especially a short window like that. I've seen launches way worse than that. I think of Fallout 76, for example. Uh, it's not unusual, and I think Hinton did a great job fixing it so quickly. So that was no issue. The other thing, though, is that the Lona community did a great job while this was being fixed. So uh, Thomasina who had about a thousand viewers at the time. She did her Thomasina Tea Time, where she just sat and talked about the Long Dark and entertained viewers while they were waiting for a fix. Rand Alf, 1966, who is also a singer, he played the guitar and sang songs. So <laughs> the community was doing a great job just keeping people entertained until the fix came through. And eventually it did, and then it was normal. The game worked. And that was it. No problem solved. And there's always going to be people who are upset about this sort of stuff, but these things happen. It's really not a big deal, I think. I think overall it was a successful launch. A little bump here and there doesn't matter. Um, and then you got to play the DLC. I jumped in blindly to try the new areas by myself, and then I made a video about that, and then I streamed later. But it was a fun day in the Twitch community for the Long Dark, because there was so much activity. Everyone was excited. There was a little bit of a hiccup, but then it started out all right. It was a really great day, I thought. Uh, really nice. And then, of course, there were bugs. You know, there were loot um, that ex happened on Interloper that shouldn't be there. Like, you could find guns, MREs, and that sort of stuff. Uh, there were bugs with uh, animals and uh, all sorts of glitches. Uh... Uh... Uh, uh, it hurts. I hit away. Uh. And that happens all the time. This is not uncommon. And they started fixing these. They did Hawk fixes very quickly, and then they did some quality of life fixes here and there. Uh, and over time, it got polished. And then, of course, DLC Part 2 came out in March. And of course, they wanted to release it every 8 to 10 weeks, but it took much longer than that. Now, in my opinion, that doesn't matter at all. So, please express what you think in the comments. But it doesn't really matter to me how long things take. This is a lot of content for a small developer like this. And a lot of things to add. And a lot of it's free also. You don't even need the DLC. You get all this stuff if you don't pay for the DLC. Which is uh, fantastic. It's such a good game. And if none of this was added, I would still be in love with this game. It's the best game ever made, in my opinion. I will say I agree with one criticism, though. There was one minor thing that happened. Uh, when the DLC was released, 
hinted on how to create this roadmap of everything they were going to release. But one thing they hadn't done was that they, did, they didn't say in advance what was going to be released when. Which meant that when DLC Part 1 came out, everyone said, Where's the Cougar? Where's the Cougar? Have they had the Cougar yet? Where's the Cougar? Is the Cougar there yet? Where's the Cougar? And where's the sled? How do I make the sled? Can't figure out how to make the sled, right? Because they didn't say what was going to be added. And then then they did the announcement. And then a lot of people were like, oh, this is so cool. Uh, wait a minute, though. Why is there no safe house customization or whatever? Now, obviously, it would be naive to think that all of this stuff would be added in one patch. Of course, that's not going to be the case. But they didn't say in advance exactly what they were going to release uh, in part one. And I think caught a few people off guard. And that made them a bit upset. And I understand that. I think that was a, probably a, a, a little mistake that they could have uh, corrected. Which they did a better job of with the DLC part two. Uh, they kind of announced more or less what was going to happen in advance that time. And that made a lot of people uh, happier. And also I have to say one thing about the DLC part two. Intland listens to the players when DLC part two came out with Signal Void. The Signal Void was not included in the uh, in, in in Interloper. And they saw no reason to have it in Interloper because of the loot and the, the, the scarcity of stuff in that difficulty. Note that the tale is not available in Interloper, as we felt that the constraint that make that experience enjoyable work against the goals of the tale. But a lot of people complained and said, I want it, even if there's no loot, it's just the experience. And they said, okay. And then within about two weeks, just two weeks, they added the void to Interloper. Because that's what people wanted. And isn't that great? So I just wanted to say, this is why this is more of a podcast, and this, this video is more just me rambling, really. And I think that the DLC and the uh, free content and Hintland's effort is, is just phenomenal. I think they're doing a great job. And there isn't really anything bad to say about it. Even if the DLC stopped right now. And there was no more releases. I would still say it's totally worth getting. And it's a fantastic addition. And even if you don't get it and get the free update that's fine too. And it's a shame that uh, the developers felt the need to apologize. Uh, that the release hadn't gone that well. Uh, but I understand why. Because... A lot of people were upset, but very often the thing is that the people who complain the most are the voices that you hear, and the people that are happy are silent. So you don't really hear from people who are happy, you hear from people who are unhappy. I think there's a saying that something like, an unsatisfied customer will tell 10 people, but a happy customer will tell 3, or something like that. Uh, so it's always going to be the case that the unhappy voices are louder. But in my opinion, I think that it's all going really well. So I look forward to DLC Part 3. So in terms of news, the only really news in this video is that you have to expect going forward that the DLC will be spread out more than what was planned. It could take longer than a year. Uh, those six parts of releases will, will spread out more parts than initially planned. So we have to be patient to get more content. And Episode 5 will not be out this year. But that's basically it. And then Raph's back as game director as well. But yeah, that's basically it. But yeah, in my opinion, I think that... Uh, I understand why this apology was written. But I think, in my opinion, that Hintlin is doing a fantastic job. I don't have anything negative to say about him at all. Uh, little glitches, uh, you know, issues at launch are to be expected. And their launch, I think, was pretty good compared to other launches I've seen. And they fixed it quickly. And sure, there were bugs, there were issues and glitches, and they are fixing them, or they have fixed them, and they're working on it, and they listen to community. I don't know what else they could really do. They're also a small developer, and they're very involved in the community, and are very uh, good at listening. So, in my opinion, you know, I don't I don't have any affiliation with Hintland, they don't sponsor me or anything, although sometimes they give me codes and stuff like that. Um, they're very generous to the content creators. But... So I'm not saying this because of some obligation, but in my opinion, I think the game is fantastic and the team is doing a brilliant, brilliant job of adding content, of polishing the content and updating the game generally, even though that isn't even necessary because the game is so great the way it is right now. But that's the future of the long dark right now. You're looking at 
uh, some additional DLC releases. We're going to eventually get things like the Trader, the Cougar. Uh, there's at least two more regions coming out and that sort of stuff. But when this comes out, we don't know because uh, it's going to be whenever and not this 8 to 10 release schedule they initially said because they can't stick to it, it's too difficult. And I think that's fine. Uh, it doesn't matter. The game is uh, brilliant the way it is now. If you haven't got the DLC, I do recommend getting it because the tale is really interesting, uh, a really fun thing to do, and adds a whole new immersion and loot to the map. So I think it's really good. But if you don't get it, you're going to enjoy the game as is anyway. And the, and the additions that are the DLC are just that, they are additions and not essential. You can enjoy the game really well without the DLC, so don't feel obliged to get it at all. But it is worth it in my opinion. Also, it's nice to support the company because they're a small independent game developer. So it's nice to support them financially in the sense that up until now, you got all this other content for free uh, over, what would it be, uh, eight years of development. You pay, the game, pay for the game once and you get all these updates. Now, some people are of course saying the reverse. They're saying like, well, this game was started in like 2013, released in 2015. 14 early access released in full version 2017 and they still have not finished story mode and i get that i get that a lot of people really like story mode they like win to mute and they want to finish story um and that's fine i do understand that i do know that they have a script for it they are working on it it is going to come out it's just going to take longer than uh, they thought keep in mind that the longevity of the long dark like the real core of it that keeps the game relevant is survival mode because survival mode is what people play again and again and again it has replayability and you can survive hundreds of days but people don't tend to replay story mode i mean of course you replay it and you can enjoy it but once you play it story mode you played it you might play it again here and there but it's not really a a, a long-term thing it's something you play you know, once or twice or so you know but in survival, you can play for a really long time. So it's, it makes sense that survival is the priority, if that makes sense. But it's understandable, of course, that people really want episode 5. Uh, we do know that the tales are going to tie in to episode 5. So we're getting minor updates. And they do say in the developer diary that there will be updates for episode 5 at the end of the year. So we will hear more about it. But for now, that is basically the future of the Long Dark. You have to expect releases to be more spaced out than before. Uh, episode 5 is not coming out this year. but uh, And that was basically all the news there was. And this is a long video, but it's mostly because I wanted to share some of my own thoughts and some background. And in my opinion, um, even though there's been some hiccups, you know, some glitches and so on. In my opinion, I don't care at all. I think they're doing a great job. I think the game is fantastic. I think the content is fantastic. Sure, it would have been great to have a roadmap that, that says we're releasing this at this point, then and then. Uh, that would have been great, but I think it's. I'm happy to wait. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. Uh, if the game was never updated from this point on, it would still be a great game. Um, that's just my opinion, though. And uh, it's, uh, it's hard for me to express how good this game is. How immersive it is, how beautiful it looks. How many hours you can put into it you can survive for so long and have so much fun and the community is great the youtube community and the, is, is one thing but the the forums are great and uh, even the reddit community is good and the twitch community is fantastic i absolutely recommend that you check out twitch for long dark even if just for the long dark because there's loads of streamers there who are very friendly very inclusive very promoting of each other if you want to stream yourself and it's just overall, it's such a positive community. And the developers help with that because they listen to the community and they make it a friendlier place. This is a refuge in many ways from toxic video games. You don't get toxicity in the long dark. Of course, there's always an exception here and there. But generally speaking, it's a very friendly community, very inclusive, very positive. And it's just a great game, uh, even if without the community as well. It's just so immersive, so fun to play. And you can connect to other people. Despite being a game about isolation, it's extremely inclusive and social. Isn't that ironic? <laughs> but yeah. But anyway, that's what I thought about this. And I just thought 
despite there not being that much news as such, I just wanted to share what my thoughts were. And uh, apologies if I was rambling. Maybe use this video to fall asleep too, but that's fine. <laughs> I just wanted to say what I had to think about this. Uh, I think they're doing a fantastic job and there is nothing to worry about. Things will be released when they are released, but I understand why they felt they had to apologize for this. That's okay. With that said, I hope you enjoy The Long Dark, whether it's DLC or not. And I hope to see you in the future. And I look forward to the new releases whenever they come. See you next time. Survive. Bye bye. My mother was a tailor. She sold my new blue jeans. Father was man way down in New Orleans. so much. I'm so glad you enjoy. I love doing this. This is how I end my stream usually. At the end of my stream I always sing a song or two or three. Depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Now mothers tell your children not to do what I have done to spend their lives in sin and misery in the house of the rise and sun One of my favorites. It's one of the songs I've been playing longer than just about any other song. <laughs>